Hi, welcome everybody. Can everybody hear me here in the room? Excellent, all right. So uh, today we're gonna be talking about Alias Burn, a fault injection platform that, that we put together. My name is Patrick Ballon Monterde. I'm a director for the EMC, technical director for the EMC program. And with me, I have Adrian Moreno, uh, who's the technical lead for this project. Uh, for all those wondering what uh, EMC code is, is a program that uh, generated from EMC and we're basically focused on DevOps, on developer communities and open source projects. A result of that, um, Alias Burn is one of those open source projects that we're basically making available for everybody to, uh, to enjoy and to, to work with. So one of the things that, uh, based on our experience, has happened and the things that you're gonna see overall, like most of the different architectures and communication between services is being done today via REST APIs, right? Uh, that's great. There's a lot of people uh, and a lot of companies making this transition very easy. But the challenges that we've seen is it's very easy to implement, but at the same time, it's really hard to test. So, and it has to test, it's really hard to test because we have a lot of challenges with the environment in which our applications live. So from you know, unexpected HTTP responses from APIs not being documented uh, to having servers being overloaded like timeouts and backups and uh, also network latencies. You know, how many of you have done now, you know, mobile development? That's right. So you know, you're gonna have different uh, type of network bandwidth. You're gonna have different types of jitter. Uh, you're gonna have different systems being geolocated on different places. And to add to that, you may have also connections that may drop and TCP IP uh, resets, which is definitely not nice. So really the motivation came from, number one, there wasn't really a truly open source um, product available for, for doing this. Um, how do we enable our community of developers or testers and, and our operations team to actually use tools to make uh, applications more resilient and, and more resistant to, to failure. So for developers, how can we build more fault-tolerant applications and services? From the testers, how do I know that uh, the application that my developers have done is actually gonna be resilient? So I need to have a place, a, a tool, something that allows me to make these things repeatable. And the third, or operations teams, how do we enable them to really make the testing of that um, failures and really understanding how the application is gonna behave on a, on a real life environment without, without specific tooling. A great example for the operations team is uh, Chaos Monkey. How many of you guys need, know Chaos Monkey from Netflix? Effectively, that's what they're doing. Their operations, enabling their operations team to make failures live. So, because of that, um, the developer community has been really working hard on finding, you know, what are the techniques and tools that we can have for defense programming. The reality is, you know, we started with, you know, typical exception handling, and then after that we started enabling things like retry policies, exponential backoffs, timeout handling, and then the last generation of, of implementation will use patterns like uh, circuit breaker pattern, okay? Now the challenges that we have with all that, that's all and great, but how do we test those things? Right. How do you know that a, all this knowledge, all these patterns that we have implemented are actually properly tested so we have things that, that we can do for, for them? So the Elios Burns will help you to do different things. The first one is the ability for you to monitor and record the, the API traffic. It will, allows you the, it will allow you and give you the ability of creating inject faults from our, the request side and also the response side, recreate the same exact issues that you currently see as your services communicate. So making the process repeatable. Validate on implementation. So making sure that when changes are implemented in your code base, you have the ability of rerun and recreate those faults so you can have regression testing, testing for, for that. The last thing, uh, will be the, your network latency injection and also will help you to test some of the server overload behaviors. So, um, in order to make this easy and, and to make it, 
to enable the developer communities to do that, we decided to do our packaging a little bit differently. We have your standard virtual machine that you can add to your environment, but we also created things like Docker containers where you can plug in as part of a specific environment or co-locate that with your client and your server. So this way it's easier for you to perform the testing. For the developers and collaborators on the project, we created a Vagrant box. So it's very, very easy for you to create a Vagrant box, upload everything and start developing code into this platform. So Alias Burn. If you have seen some, some other tools, similar tools um, on, this, on this arena, especially for REST tools, the core of it is going to be a reverse proxy. So what Elios Burns does is effectively a tool that allows you to monitor the traffic HTTP and HTTPS between a client and a server and give you the ability to inject faults on the request level and also at the response level. And with that, I'll let Adrian to give into more detail about right. what the architecture looks Thank like. Thank you. So, so here we have the, the architecture diagram for, for Helios Burn. We can see that the, all the different components that we have. Uh, I will start with the, in the, with the middle. In the, in the middle, we have Redis. And we use uh, Redis for all the communication within, the, within Helios Burn. And we also use Redis for, as a caching uh, service. And uh, so uh, we have the, the management API, uh, which also acts as an orchestration engine. And uh, we expose a set of uh, resources there. And uh, that communicates via Redis to, to the proxy. And uh, we give orders to the proxy to, to start listening, to stop, to change the, the, the upstream server and, the, uh, and, and other set of uh, parameters. Mm -hmm. We also have the, the web interface. Uh, that web interface allows users, we can see, the allows users to, to access there and, uh, and manage uh, everything that the uh, Helios Burn exposes. So that's, uh, that's uh, how to create uh, test plans, uh, recordings that we are going to see next. Uh, and as a, as a data repository, we've got uh, Mongo, MongoDB. And we store there the, the data and metadata that we are using mm -hmm. on the on the project, and the proxy is a. Uh, I mean, we have a, it's set of a. Of a uh, it's made in twisted, and we have a plugin uh, architecture. Uh, if you guys have uh, have used uh, OpenStack Swift, you probably are familiar with uh, with the Swift uh, proxy. It has a, a module pipeline where you can you can load in, uh, add, remove uh, modules as you want. So we have a, a similar architecture. You can. You have a configuration file where you can uh, specify there the, all the different uh, modules that you want to load in, um, specific uh, and concrete configuration for each one of them, and uh, that acts as a registry for the for the proxy. And uh, so the proxy, wh what it does, it just uh, filters all the all the requests and responses, and pushes them to the to, through the to the pipeline. And each one of the modules is in charge of uh, applying whatever actions uh, they are implemented mm -hmm. to, to, to do, right? And we also expose, the, the proxy also exposes a, an API so, so that uh, it can be easily managed via, via an API to, to just change all the different configurations that, that it has. The, the management API is written in, in Django. Uh, just expose a uh, bunch of uh, different uh, resources to to create, uh, to create uh, test plans, uh, run them, run sessions, uh, stop them, and uh, all different kinds of uh, resources that we, that we expose via, via the API. And, uh, and the API interacts via uh, Redis with, uh, with the proxy, as you said in the, the diagram. And it also works uh, as an orchestration uh, to, to tell the proxy and the modules uh, how, to, how to behave. And uh, as a persistence, as I said, uh, we are using uh, MongoDB. And also, Adrian, for the, for the API, for the management API, what we integrate with the CI, uh, so continuous oh, yeah. delivery and continuous integration yeah. tools. So one of the things that we've done is like it's not only users manually interacting with the tool, but also the ability of having the, your tooling that you currently use, mm -hmm. uh, your Jenkins or, or Team CD, whatever is your CI, CD tool, and integrate those as part of your Basically, development lifecycle and deployment of those apps. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, the API is to. I mean, you can use uh, for whatever whatever tool you want to. Has to automate things, and uh, it's easier, of course. So, 
The API is also used uh, by the by the web UI, and it's uh, just a web interface that uses the the API. is the only communication it has is the the API, and uh, you can nicely see all the different features that we that we offer. So if, uh, you can create the test plans and manage everything, manage the rules and all the stuff to to uh, can, that, that will be applied to the to the actual traffic that the proxy is uh, is receiving. So. We have uh, uh, like uh, three. Right now, we have three uh, proxy modules uh, implemented, and uh, we are working on uh, the two other ones that we are gonna. I'm gonna tell you right now. So the first one is the the fault injection, uh, which uh, manages and, and runs the, the test plan, and the and the test plan contains a set of uh, rules, and uh, those rules just uh, the you can think of a, as as a test plan, like a, like. Like the the way you are uh, just shaping the traffic, you are uh, modifying the the traffic. So you may have a, a test plan for a particular service, let's say like uh, OpenStack Suite, another test plan for uh, Amazon S3, and the or and, and one test plan for each one of the different services that you that you may have. So a test plan has uh, many rules, and the one rule has a, a filter and an action. So the filter is the the condition that has to be met. For the for the rule to apply, and the action is uh, determines what uh, how the traffic, how the request and response is uh, is modified. Right? So we have different kinds of actions. So we can modify the request, the response, respond on, on behalf of the upstream server. So we, we don't even contact with the with the server. Drop the connection, rest the connection, and some other action that we that we have and we are going to also to implement. Yeah, effectively, this module allows you to create a full on rule based into artificial intelligence engine and you can you can share with with some other people as part you know of the of the community mm -hmm. yeah and this is a an example of a, what a what a rule looks like so this is a simple one this have a, we, we just have a here a rule that applies to, to the, all the requests that contain the the method that are the method the HTTP method get it contains the header uh, Firefox in the user agent key so whenever we find uh, an HTTP traffic like that, the action that we take is drop the, the connection. So you, you, you can you can do uh, I mean you, you can uh, configure the, the rules and everything as, as you want to just to to hit and to and to filter a particular uh, traffic. Yeah. So the second module is the traffic recorder. The traffic recorder is simple. This records the HTTP traffic, obviously. And uh, the good thing is that we we can uh, go ahead and export that traffic into a test plan, so that makes easier the the thing of uh, creating a test plan. So we we will just export this traffic and create rules out of uh, that traffic that we just have recorded. And the fourth module, this uh, we are right now implementing this this module and the next one. This is the quality of service. So the 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 idea here is to simulate. Uh, networking conditions, you know the real-world networking conditions, and uh, and to do that, we just created this module. The we the users should be able to to just specify the the link latency, add jitter to the to the network, packet loss, and the well, different kind of uh, stuff to just to modify the quality of service of the the network. And the last one uh, is the the server overload uh, module, and this one just uh, just recreates and simulates a, a, a server that it's overloaded, and uh, we can just set a different kind of uh, configuration just to respond with a uh, 503 service unavailable or all different kinds of uh, HTTP status codes to to just tell the client that the the, the server is overloaded and mm -hmm. uh, cannot cope with uh, all the all the requests yep. that the client is sending. Yeah. Also, the headers and the and all this stuff. So, thank you very much for for attending. And uh, if you, we are uh, encouraging you to to come to, to the GitHub page and uh, please, uh, you have any questions or want to con contribute to to the to the project. Yeah, you are. Please come play with us. That's awesome. Yeah. Really appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks everyone for your time.